And welcome, everybody. We're delighted to have you here on this very special night. One of the most prestigious honors bestowed by the National Football Foundation, the Distinguished American Award, recognizes an outstanding person who has maintained a lifelong interest in the game, exhibited enviable leadership qualities, and made con significant contributions to the betterment of amateur football. Tonight, we add to the list of extraordinary past recipients by presenting the coveted award to four-star Navy Admiral and current University of Texas System Chancellor, William McRaven. Chancellor McRaven, we are indebted to you and to all those who have risked their lives to serve this country. Tomorrow marks the 75th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack. In remembrance, we ask everyone here in the audience who has served in the military, if you would please rise so that we may salute you for the sacrifices that you made for our country. Please rise, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for the very special sacrifices you made for all of us. We take great pride in honoring Chancellor McRaven tonight. He truly ranks among our nation's greatest defenders. He has proven himself as a calm and decisive military leader who now brings his exceptional leadership skills to educating the next generation at the University of Texas. Everyone, please turn your attention to the video screens for a tribute to Chancellor McRaven. A leader must be selfless, committed, and strive for a better world. From keeping our country safe to preparing the next generation of great leaders, William McRaven is the living embodiment of a distinguished American. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never, ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. With San Antonio as his childhood backdrop, McRaven spent much of his time pursuing athletics discovering a knack for leadership unrivaled by his peers and teammates. McRaven's father was an Air Force colonel who briefly played professional football, instilling a love of both country and the game of football in his son. After playing high school football, the younger McRaven found himself at the University of Texas on an ROTC scholarship and leading the track team. McRaven would go on to a successful military career serving as commander of the United States Special Operations Command, achieving the rank of four-star admiral. He distinguished himself on a global level, becoming a counter-terrorism advisor for Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. During this time, McRaven successfully organized the operations capturing Saddam Hussein and the raid that led to the death of Osama bin Laden. Following the successful mission, he was described as a person confident in his abilities, not needing to garner more credit than he is due. When excess credit was given, he deflected it to others. McRaven's military legacy goes beyond strategy and warfare. Along with his wife, George Ann, McRaven spearheaded the creation of the Preservation of the Force and Family Initiative to ensure the mental, spiritual, and physical well-being of those who serve as well as their families. Following his unparalleled success in military service, McRaven took on a new challenge in 2015, becoming the chancellor for the University of Texas system. In his role, he supervises more than a dozen institutions, educating over 200,000 students and providing careers for thousands of educators, healthcare professionals, and researchers. McRaven has received numerous awards for his leadership and service, including the National Intelligence Award, the Intrepid Freedom Award, and the Distinguished Service Award from the FBI Agents Association. 
for his leadership, service to country, and commitment to higher education. The National Football Foundation proudly presents the Distinguished American Award to William H. McRaven. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my great privilege to present the Distinguished American Award from the National Football Foundation to Chancellor William McRaven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Steve, and let me thank the entire National Football Foundation for this truly magnificent recognition. I also want to recognize all the great folks that came from, uh, from UT Austin to be here tonight. I've got a great Texas contingent here. Thanks for going, coming so far to be part of this. I only wish my father were here to see me receive this award. While all of my football was played in the backyards and the intramural fields, my dad actually had a long career in football. He played his high school ball at Portageville High in Missouri and his college ball at Murray State in Kentucky. In 1975, he was inducted into the Murray State Football Hall of Fame. It was one of the proudest moments of his life. He also spent two years from 1938 to 1940 in the pros with the Cleveland Rams. In 1940, he and five other members of the Rams uh, organization headed to California and joined the Army Air Corps. Within 18 months, Dad was flying fighter support for bombing missions over Germany. He would go on to fly throughout the war and into the Korean conflict. He retired from the Air Force in 1967, and we settled in San Antonio, Texas. As a child, I remember that my dad was a rabid football fan. Not a Saturday or Sunday went by without us sitting down in front of the TV watching the college and pros. But dad was not very forgiving to the teams he loved. If they failed to make a first down on third and four, you heard about it. If the receiver dropped a pass, the punter muffed a kick, or the quarterback was sacked, my father said words I didn't even know existed. My mother would always scream from the kitchen, Mac, watch your language. But when the team did something well, my dad would jump up out of his chair and yell, now that's the way you play football. I learned over the years that this expression had a much deeper meaning to it. To my father, the gridiron was not just a playing field, it was life and 120 yards of turf. Everything about the game had a lesson. My father had a certain expectation about how players would act between the lines. And for me, the lesson was clear. This is how he expected me to act on the playing field of life. First, he always lectured me that winning was never about a single player, it was about the team. Any success would come only when everyone worked together. He had seen men die in combat who had failed to act as a unit. This had a lasting impression on him. He appreciated that football was a meritocracy. You excelled on your own hard work and your talent. Whether you were rich or poor, black or white, big or little, there was a place for you on the team if you gave it your all. Football was a tough sport. That's why he loved it so much. You got hit. You got hurt. But if you got knocked down, you had better get up off the ground. Getting knocked down wasn't disgraceful, he said, but lying there was. He told me that nothing about the next game was guaranteed. You had to earn your place on the roster every single week. He knew that football humbled you. There was always someone bigger, faster, or stronger than you were. But being humble was a trait my father admired greatly. Above all else, above all else, he preached that the game deserved respect. Respect for the rules, respect for your opponents, respect for the coaches, respect for the referees, and respect for the fans. It was respect that made the game noble and honorable. Respect that made the game worthy of praise, worthy of adulation. And it was respect that made the game worth passing on to your sons and grandsons. If you didn't respect the game and those that played it, coached it, and judged it, then how would you ever learn to respect those outside the game? The teachers, the cops, your colleagues, and your bosses. The game of football defined my father and much of the greatest generation. And it also defined many of the men I served with after 9-11. But even those that never played it down were shaped by football's influence. They were young boys who had become soldiers. 
but everyone still wanted to be a football hero. They wanted to be the quarterback who threw the winning touchdown, the running back who broke a long run, the cornerback who intercepted the final pass, or the linebacker who held a goal line stance. My soldiers cheered mightily for their teams, the Tigers and the Crimson Tide and the Seminoles and the Buckeyes, the Black Knights, the Midshipmen, the Falcons, the Aggies and the Longhorns. Many a combat mission was delayed just so the soldiers could catch the last two minutes of a game. But for some, it was the last game they ever saw. While the days of my father's leather helmets are long gone, I am convinced that the game and how we play it is more important today than ever before. We are a nation that needs football. We need to raise men that are tough and not afraid to take a hit. We need to raise men who will play in the driving rain and the falling snow. We need men who don't feel entitled but must work every day to earn their reputation. We need men who are humbled, who are humbled by others' talents but confident in their own strengths. We need men who know the value of teamwork and above all else, we need men who respect the game and all that it represents to the American people. As crazy as it sounds, I believe the future of this nation may very well rest with the future of this sport. It will rest with you, the players, the coaches, and the fans to ensure that the American people always see the importance of the struggle on the gridiron. It will rest with you to uphold the values of the game to our young men, to ensure they are always committed, always committed to fair play, hard work, humility, and respect. And when they show that respect, when the game is bigger than any single player, when the game is treated with honor and dignity, and when all that is good and decent about this noble competition is brought to the field, then somewhere from the nosebleed section, my dad will be jumping up and down and yelling, now that's the way you play football. Thank you very, very much.